In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, we come on this day in preparation for what is to come, our Easter celebration, the great resurrection of your Son. And Father, we know that this story of Lazarus is a prefigurement of Jesus' resurrection and ours as well. And Lord, just we come and we beg you to break into our hearts all the more today, now, so that we may know the truth of your, your grace and your mercy for us. Open our hearts to hear what it is you wish us to hear in my voice to proclaim your praise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. I've been a priest 11 years. Uh, I've never seen anyone rise from the dead. Done hundreds of funerals, funeral home visits, visits to hospitals where people have died. I've never seen anyone rise from the dead. I've witnessed profound miracles with my very own eyes. I've seen the, the blind regain sight. I've seen shrunken limbs grow. I've seen rashes clear up before my eyes. Great profound miracles. I've never seen the dead rise out of the casket. So what is Jesus trying to say here? What is happening here in this gospel this gospel, the raising of Lazarus. And so we hear the, the, the story of the raising of Lazarus in John's gospel and in Luke's gospel. Two similar accounts, but we hear John's account of it today. And, uh, and, and throughout uh, the gospel of John, the author, John the Evangelist, uh, portrays Jesus as, uh, as a, a higher, uh, loftier understanding of Christ, of the Christ, and throughout it, he, he, uh, he has Jesus, and this is our, our blessed Lord, it's not just he writing it, that Jesus spoke these, uh, he con- Jesus continues to give I am statements, they're called, and so there are seven specific I am statements and dozens of other accounts throughout the Gospel of John. Jesus says in John 6, I am the bread of life. John 8, I am the light of the world. John 10, I am the gate for the sheep. John 10, again, I am the good shepherd. John 15, I am the true vine. John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, here in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. So what is Jesus trying to say as he says, I am the resurrection and life. But what is he trying to say? What is he trying to convey to us as he uses these I am statements? And for us to know what he's getting at, we have to go all the way back to the book of Moses. We know our friend, uh, go back to the book of Exodus. We know our friend Moses. Moses, who's, who's, left, uh, who's left there at the water. Pharaoh's daughter adopts Moses. Moses is raised up in in the in the in the the palace of Pharaoh, he's a, he's w- one of the king's sons essentially, and so Moses goes out and remember the story. He witnesses one of his fellow Jewish men being being beaten by a, by an Egyptian soldier. So Moses slays the Egyptian. He he beats him to death with a rock, and then because of that, Pharaoh, his stepfather, wants to kill him. He's going to put him to death. And so Pharaoh or Moses has to flee. And he goes into the desert and he flees. There the Lord speaks to him. Where does he speak to him at? At the burning bush. And so God there says to Moses, he says, I want you to go back into Egypt and bring my people out of slavery. Get them out of slavery. And Moses looks at the burning bush, looks at God, and he says, how in the world could you ask me to do this? I'm a bumbling, stuttering, murdering idiot. What are you doing, God? They're never going to believe me. Who should I tell them sent me? And God says, tell them I am. I am who am sent you. So Jesus, throughout John's gospel, is making himself equal to God. 
He's showing his divinity. He's revealing his divinity. He says, before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were, I am. And at that point, the Jews tried to kill him. So throughout John's gospel, the author, St. John the Evangelist, is pulling back the curtain little by little for us to glimpse to see Jesus' divinity. And here we have this profound moment. But we have to ask ourselves why Ultimately, I mean, every believer has to ask themselves at some point in their lives, why did God become man for me? Why? Why did God leave heaven to become one of us? Jesus came to wage war. He says, I did not come for peace, but I came to bring fire upon the earth. I came to wage war. And the answer to why God became man for you and for me is revealed here at the end of this gospel story of Lazarus that we just heard. Jesus goes to the tomb. He goes to the tomb of his friend Lazarus and tears are running down his cheeks. He loves Lazarus. See how he loved him. And it says Jesus wept. It's an understatement. It's an understatement. The Greek word that's used here uh, is Jesus is trembling. He's shaking. He's weeping so hard. He's convulsing. He feels pain because of the loss of his brother, his friend. He's experiencing heartache. See how, they, see how he loved him. And it shows Jesus' humanity next to his divinity. He is true God and true man. He's not half God, half man. He's not 20% God, 80% human, vice versa. He's not human, just draped in divinity. He is full God and full man. And he aches with a human heart. There he is, tear-streaked face, soaked on his, on his cheeks. And it says Jesus is perturbed <laughs> twice. He's perturbed again. I don't ever use the word perturbed. <laughs> Maybe moms use that with their kids now and then. I don't ever use the word perturbed. I, 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 don't, I don't, it's not part of my lexicon, but it's again a terrible translation. The original Greek contains, uh, contains a much deeper word. It means that he bellowed with anger, that he's angry. He's viciously angry. He's absolutely furious. He's bellowing with anger, with rage, but at who? There's no indication in, in John's gospel that he's angry with Martha and Mary. They haven't done anything. They've lost his brother, and he loves them. He's not angry with the Jews because, because they've cared for Martha and Mary. Who's he angry at? Why is he angry? And then Jesus comes to the tomb, and he screams, Lazarus, come out! He's angry. Jesus is raging at death. He's raging at the tomb. He's absolutely angry, and he has come to destroy death. He's come to wage war against death, to wage war against Satan in his last stronghold over you and over me as believers. Jesus doesn't say to Martha and Mary and the family and everyone there who's mourning, he doesn't say, oh, it's okay, it's all right, Lazarus has died, everyone goes to heaven. He doesn't say that because he knows it's not true. He doesn't say that, and he comes with a solution. He comes with the, 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 the solution for the problem, and the problem is sin and death. He is the resurrection and the life. He knows that the only way to save Lazarus from the tomb, to save you and me from the grave is that he has to go there himself. And he does it for you. Only God can raise the dead. Only God can save us from the clutches of the enemy. I am the resurrection and the life. But he leaves us with a question. And he leaves Martha with a question. He asks her, he says, do you believe this? 
do you believe this, that I am the resurrection and the life? And he's asking you that today. He's asking us to respond. Do you believe this in an unbelieving world where people think that death is the end? Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Are you going to follow me? Do you believe this? At some point in our lives, we have to answer that. And we must choose to follow him knowing that his promise is life. Do you believe this? Holy Week is fast approaching, brothers and sisters. The reason for Jesus' coming is this week ahead, that he could destroy death and bring us to life. That's the promise for the one who believes and follows in him. And so this week as we prepare our hearts, let us answer God's question to you and me. Do you believe this? He's waiting for our answer. Amen.